Yeah, you know, I think it's, um, it's unfortunate, to be honest, because I've never had an issue with any of my coaches before. From the moment I got here, I'm not sure what his issue was with me. I can't really give you an answer why things we never really connected. Maybe from the get-go, was feeling like I was having to like try to prove myself to him and my capabilities and what I've been able to do for this game. And the Los Angeles Lakers this past year were nothing short of a disaster. And it seems like even though we're in the NBA playoffs right now and we're not seeing the Los Angeles Lakers play any basketball, the drama in Los Angeles is continuing. And no, I'm not talking about the drama that stars John C. Riley as the late great Dr. Dr. Jerry Buss, but it just seems like things are taking a very sad turn for the Los Angeles Lakers. And ironically, I made a lot of content like this for my football channel, Microphone, where you see players trying to send a message by doing one specific thing to their social media account. Now, we're gonna get to what's causing all of this and what the future is gonna look like for the Los Angeles Lakers. But before we get to the content, I wanna let you know that I am bringing back $500 giveaways. All you have to do to enter is subscribe and turn on my notifications on this channel. You can also join my Discord community if you want to tell me that the Lakers stink straight to my face. A link to that's in the description down below. And now that we get all that out of the way, cue the intro. Chuck one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Don't worry, Russell Westbrook stands. This is a safe space for all of us. I am not going to waste most of this video just talking about how horrible of a season it's been for Russell Westbrook. I'm just gonna bring up the facts. The fit between LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook just wasn't a solid one. But Russell Westbrook has also been struggling to find a home for himself ever since he got traded from the Oklahoma City Thunder. In an off season where the OKC Thunder didn't necessarily have a choice because they got an offer that was way too good to refuse for both Russell Westbrook and Paul George. The OKC Thunder had one of the most unique opportunities to flip from true contenders with star players on their team to just instantly rebuilding with a tremendous load of assets. Ever since then, Russell Westbrook has been traveling all across the United States, trying to pair up with various stars and hopefully recapture some of the magic that made him one of the most exciting players in the NBA, starting with James Harden and the Houston Rockets, which was a cute experiment, but ultimately we didn't really get the opportunity to see the true potential of James Harden and Russell Westbrook due to a global pandemic hitting the Houston Rockets right when Russell Westbrook started getting into his groove with James Harden. By the time the NBA resumed in the bubble, Russell Westbrook would just come out of COVID protocol. Bear in mind back then, COVID was a very intense illness that you could get. Not to say that it's not a difficult illness to receive now, but we're talking about the very early days of COVID here where there weren't even vaccines to kind of mitigate some of the symptoms. No, we're not getting into vaccine discussion in this video. Ultimately, Russell Westbrook would then get traded from the Houston Rockets to the Washington Wizards for a package surrounding John Wall. The Rockets were hoping that this would be enough to appease James Harden, but ultimately they were incorrect. Russell Westbrook would have a up and down season with the Washington Wizards before once again hitting his stride during the tail end of the season, which was enough for the Los Angeles Lakers to take a chance on him. Now, this is where things get a little murky because there's two sides to this story. According to Clutch Sports, Rob Palinka just went ahead and decided to trade for Russell Westbrook. However, if you ask Rob Palinka and the Los Angeles Lakers, what really went down is Rob Palinka wanted to target stars like Buddy Heald and DeMar DeRozan, which wouldn't cost nearly as much money as Russell Westbrook and wouldn't cost the Lakers as much of their depth. But Anthony Davis and LeBron James, two Clutch Sports clients, ultimately said they wanted to play with Russell Russell Westbrook. And ultimately the prophecy was fulfilled. A prophecy that I personally saw ever since Russell Westbrook played his college ball for the UCLA Bruins. He was finally a Los Angeles Laker. But unfortunately, things just didn't go according to plan. Russell Westbrook averaged 18 and a half points, 7.4 rebounds and seven assists per game while shooting 44% from the field and 29.8% from beyond the arc. The Los Angeles Lakers finished with a 33 to 49 record and ultimately never hit their stride. Be that because they weren't healthy and Russell Westbrook AD 
and LeBron James never got the opportunity to play with one another. But even when they did, they didn't really look that good together. And ultimately, the main reason why the Los Angeles Lakers failed was because 70% of their salary cap was allocated to three stars that just didn't play well together. And as a result, they had to lean heavily on veterans on a minimum contract and, of course, Malik Monk. The other player that they used their mid-level exception on, Kendrick Nunn, was nowhere to be found all year long. Which brings us to where we currently are, because it seems like both Rob Palinka and Clutch Sports are pointing the blame finger at each other. Palinka didn't want to bring in Russell Westbrook, and Clutch Sports has a lot of influence over the Los Angeles Lakers because, well, if it wasn't for LeBron James coming to the Lakers and ultimately bringing along Anthony Davis, you can make the argument that Rob Palinka could have been very well out of a general manager job. And according to Eric Pincus of Bleacher Report, he supports this claim. LeBron James has a strong influence on Lakers' decision making. Multiple sources indicate the team's front office is internally blaming pressure from Clutch Sports Group, representing both James and Davis, for Russell Westbrook. Here's the thing. LeBron James has been surrounded by two types of people throughout his career. He's been surrounded by yes men and people that checked him and made sure he got in line. An example of this is Pat Riley. When LeBron James first showed up to Miami, he said that he didn't want to play for Eric Spolstra, which is a theme if you haven't noticed. LeBron James gives his head coaches very, very short rope to work with. After the Cleveland Cavaliers were first in the East during LeBron James's first season, during his second stint with the Cleveland Cavaliers, following a successful season from David Blatt and the Cleveland Cavaliers not winning a championship with David Blatt, despite them having a tremendous amount of injuries, the Cleveland Cavaliers fired David Blatt during his second season in LeBron James's return in favor for Tyron Lue. Throughout this past season, you heard over and over again how the Los Angeles Lakers were considering firing Frank Vogel for a LeBron James type of guy like David Fisdale. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if the Los Angeles Lakers hired Jawan Howard as their brand new head coach because he played with LeBron James. And I think there's times where being a LeBron James yes man works and sometimes it just blows up in your face. Sitting back and saying, LeBron, it's your fault that we have Russell Westbrook is the definition of avoiding responsibility. Because at the end of the day, you're the general manager. People are gonna blame you for the bad decision. Now what's done is done. Now we should ask the question, what's next? Because you can't change the past and pointing the blame finger eventually becomes a huge waste of time. Well, the Indiana Pacers were a legitimate trade candidate with the Los Angeles Lakers for Russell Westbrook. They're one of the most likeliest teams to trade for Russell Westbrook because the Lakers are in a situation where they can't afford to waste a single year of LeBron James's extended prime and the Indiana Pacers are doing whatever they can to expedite their rebuild while also adding as many assets as possible. Now, the Indiana Pacers want to part with Malcolm Brogdon and they currently have Buddy Heald's salary on the docket. The combined salaries of Buddy Heald and Malcolm Brogdon are worth a combined behind 100 billion over the next few seasons. So this is a pretty intriguing way to one, give the Los Angeles Lakers more depth and two, get rid of Russell Westbrook, a player that finished in the top 20 for the worst wins above replacement, which means the Lakers would have been better off if they benched Russell Westbrook for the entirety of the season, at least according to the statistic. This statistic also states that Nikola Jokic should win the MVP by a long shot, which is also something I do believe in. Sorry, Sixers fans, I love Joel Embiid. I'm just a huge stat head. Now, ultimately, the reason I'm bringing this up is Russell Westbrook may have painted a picture as to where he wants to go after his brief tenure with the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, this is something I cover a lot on my microphone YouTube channel, which is pretty much what I do here, but for the NFL, where you will see a star player scrub their Instagram. I can't believe this is a trend, but scrub their Instagram of all of their pictures that represent a particular team when they're trying to indicate that they want a change of scenery. And in this case, Russell Westbrook initially removed all references of the Los Angeles Lakers, and then he did the Houston Rockets and the Washington Wizards. The only team he kept was the OKC Thunder. Now, you can interpret this in a myriad of ways. This could either be the fact that Russell Westbrook has tremendous respect for the OKC Thunder, which is the team that you will always think of first whenever you think of Russell Westbrook's NBA career, or this could be Russell Westbrook hinting that he wants to return to the OKC Thunder. Would this make sense for the OKC Thunder to do? Well, it wouldn't be the first time that they took a point guard that was perceived to be damaged goods, who was perceived to be washed and no longer a valuable player in the NBA, boosted his value, and then eventually trade him to another team for an asset. But the problem is, would Russell Westbrook stunt the development of other OKC Thunder players? Would he 
he help the likes of Shea Gilgis Alexander? What about promising rookie Josh Giddy? Would he be able to help Josh Giddy take the next step in his own development as he goes into his age 20 season? Is this necessarily a move that the OKC Thunder should pursue? Because it doesn't seem like they'd have to give up a lot in order to reacquire Russell Westbrook. Or could this just be Russell Westbrook just showing love to his old team? You can let me know in the comment section down below. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.